First things first, Jack, how are you? I'm great, yeah, it's good to be here. Well, good to uh, see you again and uh, get to pick your brain a little bit again. Yeah. So, before we get into the new album, I would like to go to your previous uh, album that you made as Mr. Jukes. Uh, oh, yeah. Alongside Barney Artist. Uh, because if you look at back at that record now, the locket, I believe it was called. Uh, mm -hmm. How how much influence did that process have on what came out now? I think probably whether it's not that album or just the Mr. Jukes project in general, it, it did have a big influence. Mm -hmm. I think number one, you can hear a direct musical influence on some songs on the album, like the opening track. Sure. Yeah, I probably could have sent that to Barney <laughs> and we would have made a song with that, but instead it came to Bombay. And the second thing is, I think the amount of features that we worked with on this record probably was inspired by just my experience with Mr. Jukes, just having so much freedom to be like, oh, let's we'll go over here and go over here and work with them. And bringing that to like the context of an indie band felt a bit unusual, but then we just thought, well, why not, you know? Yeah, well, why do you think that is, that, that doing a lot of collaborations when there's really this, this band structure, that, that it's, it, it kind of feels weird to do a lot of those? I guess it's just it not done very often, mm. uh, but I don't, I don't see why not. And I think more and more now it, it will right. be normal with, especially since the pandemic, I think it, people are so used to now collaborating over Zoom or just, you don't need to actually know someone, you can just, you know, meet them on a call and just, immediately start making music together and, um, and especially like the influence of pop music and hip-hop music on popular culture I think people will be doing this a lot more often now and I think that's a good thing. No, definitely I, th I think if you look at how music the kind of music that's coming out it feels like the genre lines are being blurred increasingly For and sure. as, you, as you mentioned kind of these collaborations and collaborations with people you wouldn't expect these seem to happen increasingly as well yeah what does that tell about kind of the state of music do you think about the state of music or are you more kind of looking at what the band does and what you do i mean i don't think about it very often to be honest but i do th i do feel happy that i think the audience these days the people consuming music are more open-minded than ever mm. and i think that has to do with growing up with streaming services because you literally just uh, you have this search bar that can just give you anything and I think maybe some people will sort of miss the days when you had your scenes and your cult, your, your cliques and but for me I think as a as a writer of music it's it's uh, comforting to know that I can be taking risks and be exploring all the different types of music that I love knowing that there's an audience out there that will be as uh, have as an eclectic as taste as I do. Mm. And you mentioned kind of going out of your comfort zone. I suppose that's a, kind of a, a big thing on this new album um, because, well, is, is is that tricky to go out outside of your comfort zone, especially because, uh, well, this isn't the first album you've made, so so you have kind of. Uh, things you like to do, you, mm. you get routines and, and how you work. How do you kind of tweak your operating modus operandi, if I can yeah, call yeah. it? Yeah, I think the more, the more records you make and the longer you're a band, the more you have to be just quite actively conscious about not doing the same thing over and over again. When we were younger, it was very natural. We were just quite restless and right. we just were exploring all these things and not really thinking about it. And now, you know, we still have that restlessness, but we're also, when it comes to choosing the songs to put on an album at the end of the writing process, we, could, we kind of say to each other, look, let's be brave, you know, like maybe 10 years ago, a song like the opening song of this album, we would have been a bit hesitant because we'd say, oh, is this, this doesn't sound like a band. There's, hard, there's like a few guitar moments on it, but you could easily give it to, you know, a, a really good MC and make mm. a, a hip-hop track. And yeah, I think we were trying to just not care so much about whether it worked or not, as long as we thought it was a great song. Does kind of a, a, a maturity, does that help as well? And then I suppose also because you've been in the industry for a while now, 
that you kind of figure out, okay, what are the things that I want to do, uh, that I want to accomplish? Um, does that make those type of decisions easier that you kind of know where you're at? Right yeah, now? I think that comes with age in general and, mm -hmm. you know, even outside making music, you just become more comfortable in your own skin, but also just you realize that the world doesn't care that much about you in a good way. Sure. I mean that positively, like when you're young, you're really self-conscious. And as you get older, you realize it's so um, egotistical to be self-conscious because everyone else is just worrying about themselves, right? Well, that's, that's an interesting uh, thought. When, when did that, because as a, as a band, you're almost, not completely, but you are somewhat at the mercy of the audience, right? Because there is this audience that, that you hopefully you want yeah, to listen. Sure. So, so how do you see this relationship then? Is, it, is that a tricky thing to balance to, to definitely do what you yourself want, but also you want to be able to live uh, from music, I suppose? Sure, yeah. And I think, I think we, we helped ourselves by very early on in our careers making these quite sort of brave musical decisions. like. We had quite a successful first album and then immediately decided to make an acoustic album, mm. which was the complete opposite and still people enjoyed it. And we, th we started to realize, you know, that this fan base that we have, they are, yeah, they're open minded and it gave us, that gave us the confidence to, to keep taking risks. And especially me personally doing my solo album, I, knew, I know there's a big crossover between a Bombay Bicycle Club fan and a Mr. Duke's fan, it's kind of mm -hmm. blurred. And so making us, yeah, some of the songs on this record, I just knew that there'd be people out there that would, that would be into it. Did you know, because I think around 2015 it was that you kind of took a hiatus as a band, did you know you always would return? And was there, what do you like about the band concept uh, compared to just being the sole mm. person who's responsible? We definitely didn't. Uh, we didn't know for certain whether we were going to come back. Um, but I do think it was one of the best decisions we ever made because we, we all went away for a good reason, wondering, you know, what else is out there in life because whatever you do in your, in your life, after a certain amount of time, you start to get these feelings of, oh, is this, is this everything? Um, and... I think it was important to go and have some perspective on the band and just start to miss each other and start to miss playing together and miss touring. Um, I think, especially with bands, it becomes quite of a, of a cycle of just album tour, album tour, mm -hmm. and you start to take it for granted maybe. And yeah, I recommend, I mean, I, I appreciate that we were very privileged to have the chance to take a break. Right. But if you do have the chance, I recommend it for every band in the world. Yeah. But I can also imagine that once you got together, and then especially with uh, this new album, My Big Day, that your lives have changed compared to 10, 20 years ago as mm. well. So, so how has that affected the way you operate as a collective? I think the big difference we noticed this album compared to just a few years ago when we got back together was I think when you're coming out of a break, there's a tendency to be quite soft on each other because we're still getting used to being a band again. And so maybe our last album, we weren't as open about being, you know, like really critical of ourselves or being like, no, especially I'm talking about the other guys talking about my songwriting, maybe, mm. you know, not being as harsh as they could be because, you know, it's, it's the early days. And, and so now we've got that out of the way on this, on this record. We're really just honest with each other. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, I, I would never want to send someone a demo and then have to try and be like polite to me. So they can be really brutal and just be like, oh, Jack, this is the worst song you've ever written in your life. And I'd be like, thanks, that's great. Let's move on and, and try again. But did, uh, have you always been like this? Have you been, uh, always been so open about kind of the creative process? I think so. I think it's the key to, to what we do is that there's there's one person that does the, the sort of initial demos. I mean, we all collaborate sure. for the final product, but I always imagine bands that write together sort of being in the studio, all smiling and like really enjoying playing. And I, if that was me, it would just be clouding my judgment of whether it's great or not, because 
who's there to be objective and just mm. listen as like a fan and not be like in the moment with all the adrenaline. You just need to be like at home making dinner, listening to the demo, like completely calm. And then you can finally say whether it's good or bad. Was there any example, is there any example that you can give maybe for, uh, of an idea that you had for a song that, that kind of the band said, well, no, then th that's not going to happen or that we don't like it, that, that after a while you, you kind of realize, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Or I mean, it happens all the time. <clears throat> you know, the, for every song that goes on the album, I'll probably write about four or five that okay. don't pass the you know, the test. How, how far do you go? Do you kind of fully work them out or are they really yeah. sketches? Okay. No, I, uh, yeah, that's the only way that I can write is like it's, it's, it's a song and it's, got, it's produced, you know, because okay. I, I write music on, sure. my, on the computer. So I think it makes it easier for people to judge as well because it sounds, sounds like it's finished. So you're just listening to it as, as the same way you listen to something on the radio. But I mean, putting so much effort in those those ideas, and they kind of like you say, you're fully producing them almost, and then somebody, somebody in the band <laughs> say, "Well, I don't like that." Or, or how how do you not deal with it? But it is. It, I mean, I, I always like the creative process because you kind of ha there is always doubt involved in, in, in any action you make. There's always uh, the, yeah. the thought, well, I could have done things differently. Yeah, yeah. And I wrote one line down. I think it was from a different interview, but. There's always that question in the back of your mind, like, is this the best that we could could have done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you kind of resolve that as as now <laughs> the album is coming out? Yeah, I mean, I I'm just I'm actually just grateful that I can have that honesty from people because I'd much rather as 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 like deflating it, it as it can be sometimes when you've spent two weeks working on something and then you throw it in the bin. I'd rather get it over and done with then than have a bunch of people that worship you saying, oh, yeah, great song. Like a band like the Red Hot Chili Peppers or someone. They just keep writing these terrible albums. I mean, no offense to any <laughs> Red Hot Chili Peppers fans, but there's no one there to tell them that it's not as good as it could be. And I mean, I'd rather nip it in the bud and just get it out of my mind then than have to make something mediocre and tour it. And then years later be like, oh, that wasn't actually very good. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's a quicker process. Do, do you know quite quickly if, if the song will work? See, it's hard for me to know. Mm. I, think, I think as a band, we, maybe we know when everybody immediately responds to a demo. For me, it's like if I get a phone call from like Jamie or from the manager, that's when it's great. <laughs> and if it's an email, it's like, okay. But there's songs, you know, like the key songs, you send them and then like five minutes later you get this call and like, wow, it's amazing. And that's the test. Well, if we take uh, Turn the World On then, what, what, do you remember what the initial spark was for that song and what the initial reaction was when you kind of presented it to the, to the rest of the guys? Yeah, so there's actually a video which we just found of Jamie like secretly filming me because I'm in the studio just like playing the guitar and I'm coming up with the chords. And Jamie is very sweet whenever he hears me doing something, he, he knows that I'll, I'll forget it the next day because I don't, <laughs> I'm not very organized, so I don't record it myself. So he just kind of gets his phone out and starts like secretly filming me. And I remember with that song, I knew when I, the, the moment I knew it was special is I played it to my dad uh, and he was at my studio just passing through and I turned around and he was, he had like tears coming down, down his face. I was like, okay, this is going to be special. If you can make your, your father cry, you know. But that's very interesting because the the subject matter of the song or the themes of the song is kind of the the, the way I see it at least uh, is kind of that cycle of life and, and yeah. hopeful you I mean you've become a father. If yeah, I'm it's a song I wrote about my son who's who's now two years old. But yeah, it's, but, I think that's probably why he was crying. <laughs> but do because this has nothing to do with. But do you see kind of uh, yourself becoming your father and then and, and your son kind of taking after you? Uh, For sure. I mean that's that's like the whole thing about having a child is it's brought me closer to my parents and I see myself in them. And I say, yes, one of the nicest things about that whole experience. And the last thing about this idea is it's, it's funny when we're younger, we can't wait to grow up, but then we're old and we can't, we yearn for those younger years. Mm. Um, I, 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 I know you as a band aren't that nostalgic because you, you prefer to live in the moment and look forward. 
but there are some memories, let's 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 say, on this album, the kind of references to memories, and then also in in the social media uh, posts and stuff. Sure, yeah. What do you see when you look at the kind of your fourteen-year-old self or your younger self? I mean, I love nostalgia personally. Okay. I'm, a, I'm all about nostalgia. I think <laughs> as a band, it's hard. It's hard when you're trying to promote something new to sort of, you know, you have to have the balance. Mm. And I think especially for us, we sort of soundtracked lots of people's teenage years and then went on hiatus. And it kind of was this moment in time that got frozen. <laughs> so it's kind of strange. Um, I th yeah, well, yeah, I think you just have, you don't want to like completely neglect it. I'd never want to be a band that you go and see at a festival and they're playing 12 new songs. Like, <laughs> I hate those bands. Um, so I think we've never been shy about, you know, finishing the song with a, a 10 year old, finishing the set with a 10 year old song or, you know, playing all the ones that people like. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're, 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 we're excited to be playing this new record and to, to go on tour and play some shows again, especially after the pandemic where we, we had a whole album written and we didn't ever get to do a tour, so. Mm. What, what is it that, well, what is it about being in a band then and then being how, however many guys and going on the road and, and doing that whole thing, especially now that we're older, I mean, I'm, I'm 37 now, I'm, I, I don't know how old you are, but you're not the, the young 20 year old yeah, anymore, yeah. right? So, so what, is, what is the dynamic and what, where the, what is the joy in, in, in just being out there with your friends and playing music? I think, yeah, I think now more than ever, you know, we, especially me and Jamie, we both have children now, maybe outside of the band, we don't get to see each other very much. Right. And honestly, being on tour, it's like we just get to hang out, just the four of us again, like when we were younger. And, and that's a lot of fun. And personally, in like a selfish way, I like, I really enjoy traveling. Mm. And as, as you get older and you have kids and, you know, you, you don't really get that experience anymore. And so in a selfish way, you know, I, I'm still very lucky that I get to go and have adventures and travel the world. And, sure. Yeah. Well, there's one other song I kind of wanted to dive in, which is Tekken 2. For me, it was Tekken 3. Uh, oh, yeah, nice. so, so, so why that video game? That, <laughs> why did that? Yeah, I still have those vivid memories. <laughs> the game. Yeah, I honestly can't remember. You know, that was an, sometimes you like, you think about the title for a long time and think about the lyrics and, this was just uh, when I finished the song and I was like sending it to the guys, I had to write something. <laughs> and I was, for some reason, that game just came into my head. And it might just be like the sort of 80s kind of, I know it was much later than that, but the kind of like quite computery yeah. drums and yeah. I can't explain why, but that, that, that game just came into my mind as I sent the song. <laughs> no. I love the idea of Shaka, because are we allowed to say, hmm, when's this coming out? Whenever you want. Okay, so we can talk about Shaka Khan. If you want, yeah. Because yeah. if, if, you, if you put it out after the yeah, announcement, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think the, the funniest thing is like the collaboration with Shaka Khan on that song. Like, it, I, I kind of wanted to ask her, like, did you ever play Tekken 2? <laughs> you know, she was, you know, of a, an age where she probably knew about it. But, uh, it turns out she's never, she's never heard of it. <laughs> But working with somebody of her caliber, I mean, wh what is that like? And even trying to, even daring to ask, is, it, is, it, is, that, is that a big step? No, I think we felt pretty like confident, like we didn't have anything to lose. Okay. And um, I personally felt confident that she would enjoy the song and she did. So that was really cool. And th that, working with her was one of those experiences where you, you just feel like, how did I get here? Like, how am I sitting in a studio with her? But at the same time, we were just both working and we were both like being super just professional and, and like both just musicians. And then that, it was amazing because we would, if we walked past the street together, we, we couldn't be more different. Mm. She's this like larger than life diva, this like, you know, incredible character. And I think if you pass me in the street, you think I'm like, uh, an accountant or something, right? Like I just will blend in somewhere. But here we were in the studio, just complete equals for, for like a brief moment. It was cool. Is, is music then that, that 
it's not common den denominator. I'm thinking of something else. But with, with with all these people that you work with, and Damon Albarn, and, mm -hmm. and is is that kind of the language that you speak then? And it doesn't matter who it who it is, but you can speak that language. Definitely, yeah. And I I've always appreciated that because I I'm not an incredibly social person, or I'm not like a guy that you know you meet in a bar and just can have a really easy conversation with. But when it comes to music, I think I find it really easy to collaborate with people and. And it, it's kind of the way that people will, will understand me. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. I get it, I get it now. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think that's why it means so much to me. But I can imagine, do you, do you have a wish list then? Do you, do you have certain people that you, that you try to work with now? Yeah, or? I mean, it's getting smaller every time because we keep working <laughs> with all these people. Checking them off. <laughs> um, I mean, I always dreamed of working with Joni Mitchell, but it's, mm. it's getting more and more unrealistic. <laughs> but I saw she was collaborating with someone on stage not too long ago. Um, who knows? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's one line. It's, for, it's from, I want to be uh, your only pet that I found interesting. And then I, I God in my pocket, I'm, I've got God in my pocket, I'm fine. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, does he mean cell phones? <laughs> what, what, what is he? So, um, yeah. what was the, the influence uh, for that particular song? Honestly, that song was like a total stream of consciousness. Okay. And it was interesting because I feel like Jamie and the band kind of analyzed it for me. Mm. And his interpretation was, it's a, I mean, this sounds, this is not what the song is about. <laughs> so I'd have to just say that. He was like, did you write a song about a priest that goes to like a S&M, like bondage sex party? I was like, uh, sure. Yeah, why not? Like, <laughs> yeah. But again, talking about, well, it's not exact same but that musical language and the fact that people can whether it's right or wrong but that people can find their own interpretations and connect it to their own lives i mean obviously you've realized this since you've been mu making music but is, is that still special the fact that you can touch people and, and affect them in, in some way shape or form for sure yeah i mean like i said it's my favorite thing about it and especially coming from someone that when they were younger like found it more difficult to make, like to connect with people and especially when you get to tour the world, it's kind of this place, you, you know, you can turn up in a country where you don't really speak the language or know much about people. And I mean, I really enjoy chatting to fans and meeting them and they can take us out to restaurants and discover a country and you kind of have this thing in common already. And yeah, it's my favorite thing about being in a band. Yeah, and in November you're going on tour in Europe, I believe. So yes, you finally. Get, you get to visit all these uh, places again. For sure. Uh, one last question. Where did uh, I don't know if it was a mixer, but where did you find equipment that went up to twelve? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's. I mean, I just noticed that when I was looking at my uh, my new mixing desk. And they must have. They must have decided to do that on purpose. <laughs> it has to be because as soon as I saw that clip, I, I thought if it was a Nigel Tufnell, yeah, exactly. immediately like, but it's too louder. <laughs> exactly. Jack, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me? Yeah, anytime. Nice to see you again.